you like to bring up your, your people? Uh, yeah, everyone. Kanti, uh, Tanaji, Holly, Shreya, Sumit, Tanmay. This is Shreya Dev Dubey who shot this. Yeah! So there's this thing in movies where like uh, romance that isn't heterosexual is like usually paired with like crime or, or something like this, right? And like sometimes that it bothers me, but like when y'all did it, like that was the most romantic thing I've ever seen in my life. Like the, the you know, the, they had like the light on them and the, I don't know, and the way they were moving their bodies, I mean, on this, like right now, it was uh, sort of intimate and I, and I had a real experience, but I imagine on set, I mean, what you guys were doing was, uh, uh, you knew what you were doing, right? This wasn't. I mean, I mean, this. There's like, oftentimes there's like an exploitative thing going on, but this was tender and romantic, and like, I just, I, I want to know, like, what you're, was it you're like? Talking about the the needle dance. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. So actually, it's, uh, what was really interesting about that is that uh, what they're trying to do is to find a vein to inject the heroin. Right. Yeah. And uh, we had a person on set that day who uh, he was a, who had basically done exactly that to the point where. It didn't have any genitals anymore. There was an abscess where it used to be. So, even though it, it, it is quite homoerotic, the way it's shot, and the, the relationship between us, uh, between the two characters, is kind of strange and weird, uh, the whole point of that scene was that the want of this drug is supersedes the want for sex or love. Even. 
and uh, that's how we came about it, and that's why it's, it is the sort of, uh, I guess, the most, uh, I would say, surreal part of the film in some ways. It is more than natural, it's supernatural, but at the same time, the guy who was there with us, he actually told us and convinced us that we didn't go far enough. He said, no, it was a proper dance, but we used to do it, me and my, or, uh, using buddy, you know, we'd get naked and we'd go and run around the crematorium and stuff like that. So, that's where that came from. So, I mean, this is, uh, this one guy who is uh, uh, recovering right now, but uh, I remember when he told me that, uh, uh, so there was this like under construction place and you know, there were these, uh, what do you call, uh, sand, you know, there was a place where there was sand that he and his friend were trying to find veins in each other and people who have any experience with mainlining would know that how uh, frustrating it is when you when you don't find a way, you know. So uh, the morning we were shooting, I remember calling this guy, uh, and he was in front of the race course, and we lost all his money. And he told me, Ronnie, I have no money left. I'm just standing in front of the race course. Uh, so I told him, why don't you just come to the set? And yeah, yeah and then I booked him a, a Uber uh, in front of the race course. He came down to the set. Then he, you know, spoke to these guys and he choreographed the whole thing and that's how, you know, we, we did it. And also while we were doing, uh, for me, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's less about uh, uh, like scene rehearsals, it's more about creating uh, certain moments. So before the shoot, I told, told Tanmay that we're just going to do two takes, one long and one close up and that's about it. Whatever we get is what we have. You know? Uh, so yeah, that's what. I like the Catholic shrine. I was really hoping for a few frames. That dance was there even in the other scene where I worked with her, the, the one I did with uh, Shrita Orna. And uh, it, was, it just felt like a dance and it just felt like a flow. And we worked so much beforehand uh, with, with the actors' workshop who they really approached the film. As you can tell, we all look very different up there. So I think we were all ready. And then Ronnie is just amazing that way. He just gave us free reign. He didn't, I didn't, he, I don't, he spoke a few words to us every day and that's it. And he just allowed us to take us take the scene wherever we wanted to take it and Shreya just, she never seemed outside of us. Like Shreya, like you know, she had the camera but it just, it was a dance. I think the, a dance is the best way to describe how we worked on this film together. Sure. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about the shooting process because you said that you were behavior and it's sort of I feel like it's hard to put your finger on what it really is there's like this purity like there's this kind of simplicity and purity of purpose but then also it's totally corrupt and sick and demented and I was just wondering for you what the fascination was and what your relationship was like to that subject uh, me and Paul were just having this conversation uh, day before yesterday and so see the thing is uh, 
modern society as a whole is constitutionally incapable to have a dialogue with the drug addict or the alcoholic. You know, it's either looked at as a crime by the state, or in the society it's looked at uh, through the lens of middle class morality. So it's very difficult to sort of understand who a drug addict is. Uh, even the co-addicts like the family members, they don't really know what's going on. They see every year, uh, you know, year after year, months after months, you know, there is, the addict is losing herself or himself, the body is going, the, you know, the relationships are going. But the, the co-addicts, the parents, the partners, they don't know what's going on, what substance he's using, uh, what what's going on in, in, like, how is he supporting his user, and so on and so forth. So if you look at the lepers, you know, uh, uh, they're kept outside the city. Uh, junkies also, drug addicts also. Nobody really wants to know what's going on, you know. And especially uh, in South Asia, uh, it's very difficult. If you have heard, if you're following news, you will see that uh, in Philippines, the heads of the state have massacred people. Like there was a genocide. It was all around here in American media, in Time Magazine, and New York Times, everywhere. That they openly said that kill all the addicts. You know, and there was no outrage. So the reason to make the film is precisely uh, because we need to exist. You know, uh, we need to say that we also have a right to live as much as anybody else has. Not from, you know, I mean this is not from the point of view of like a humanist stand or anything. But just so that the dead and the alive can have a conversation. shooting like we we had very little money to go about this and uh, yeah, that film was shot in 13 nights um, and it was a one one rainy night film we could only afford the rain machine for four of the 13 nights <laughs> so we had to make a, a, a makeshift rain machine for the other nine nights which was a lot of fun the shower nights and, and, uh, um, and uh, yeah we had we, we had a few different locations we we also had like friends helping out like shooting in friends houses for free uh, one particular location, this sort of derelict jute mill, was one of the main locations for a lot of the stuff. And interestingly, uh, the mill that we wanted to shoot in, uh, three days before the shoot, we realized that we couldn't shoot there because a dead body was found and it became a crime scene. And, uh, and we were supposed to shoot like seven nights out of the 13 or whatever. So that was a bit of a panic moment with me. Managed to get another, even better derelict jute mill. <laughs> Calcutta, Calcutta is a magical place like that. There's like amazingly beautiful derelict stuff. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you ever use any real rain or was it all? Yeah. Like, oh no. no. We were shooting in winter. Oh, okay. But the actors were getting frozen basically. Oh wow. Yeah, and also Sumit uh, used up a lot of rainwater in one of the shots in the morning, so I didn't get my white shot. I didn't even close up with the water coming over my head. Still have more close up. Well, well, awesome. So um, I know you've, you've been a you've been a, a photographer before. This is your first film. Um, I, what what are all of you going to do next? Ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a long holiday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chill for a few days and let's <laughs> <laughs> see how it goes. Anyone else have a project coming up? Yeah, we'll be writing stuff, but also uh, I just want to say that three of us went to high school together and we used to make plays together. And uh, we are going to go back to theater this year. And uh, so that's something I'm really looking forward to. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> well, anyone else? Oh, and, and by the way, I just wanted to mention your incredible score. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, 
thank you all so much for coming all this way. For thank you, everyone, for coming.